This video is brought to you on the True Geordie channel by Surfshark. Absolutely. Do you know what a VPN is? No. Thought not. A VPN is a virtual private network. Do you know what that means? I'll explain. Let's you put yourself anywhere in the world, virtually, privately, networkly. Basically, if you want to be able to watch Netflix in America, and I know you do, then you can put yourself digitally in America. That yeah. means that you can watch the Netflix over there if you've gone all the way through the Netflix over here. It's pretty good, that. Say you're also sitting in a coffee shop and you think, hold on a minute, there are hackers in coffee shops. One of these people might try and be getting to my data. This allows you to put yourself anywhere else and remain virtually anonymous online. So if you want to make yourself a little less trackable online, uh -huh. get on Surfshark. And the best thing about it is it's so affordable. 83% off, three months for free, and it gets even better than this. They got a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not happy with it in those first 30 days, you can get your money back. And for all of that, all you need is code Geordie when you check out. Hit the link in the description, go take a look at it. No pressure to buy, but you know what? If you do, there's 30 days money back guarantee. I'm just saying. That's amazing. Yeah, it's Surfshot. He just did that in one take, by the way. It's pretty good. One take, no need for any more cameras, just the one camera <laughs> right there. And you're about to watch a great video video right here. Blue Van Man's on the channel and we are sponsored by Surfshark. Enjoy. Right, Lawrence. Here we are, Brian. Right, folks. We have basically started watching one of Blue Van Man's videos in the studio the other day and realised we haven't done a Blue Van Man video for a long time and we missed the guy. Quite well. Quite we missed the guy. Yeah. It says the family sex show for ages of five and upwards tour. <laughs> Full stop. What's this uh, sex show um, appropriate for? Well, just ages five and upwards. Well, I would assume that this was part of the rant, but I don't know because he does look annoyed in that thumbnail right there. Good morning. How are we all on this day of the morning of what I am doing? I just love his little Ford Transit t-shirt. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Is it, are you not a fan of the Ford Transit? Oh, just, that should be his merch though, shouldn't it? Most, this should be Dave merch. It's just the most Dave thing. This is a man right here. This, well, yeah. This is a man who's angry. This is an angry man. He looks frustrated man. today. He's a bit red in the face. Come on, let's see what he's got to say. Some people uh, are leaving the comments of, this used to be a good channel. Uh, when you did food, you were really good. I'm unsubbing. I've said this before and I will say it again. I'm not bothered. If you think I'm going to sit there shoving calories in my face, making myself fatter, giving me a potential heart attack and stroke or whatever. <laughs> It's not funny. The idea of Dave obviously uh, not being alive upsets me. But like, it, it's just the way that this is a food channel, as far as I. It, it was a food channel. That was definitely what it started. Let, let him. No, let it, him it let actually did say. It. Okay, he, he sure. might go some of this. Right, I've said this before, and I will say it again. I'm not bothered. Yeah. If you think I'm going to sit there shoving calories in my face, making myself fatter, I do. Giving me a potential heart attack and stroke or whatever then you can, you're can you just not bothered about me personally. <laughs> Dave's, talk, Dave's not talking about individual liberty on his own channel. But, but the, the, the confusion for the fans of the channel is this is what he sold us on. What we need you to know from now on is if you're into poker, football, fighting or interviews, don't be looking at us. Because if you think that we're going to be shoving interviews in our face, giving ourselves potential stress and anxiety, then you're the mugs. Top Tickly comment. Welcome. Top <laughs> comment. Dave, I feel your frustration, mate. This is all part of their sick agenda. <laughs> All you're worried about is your own personal entertainment. There is other YouTubers out there that are more than willing to go and fill the faces every fucking day and make themselves ill. I review life. Right. I think that's what we do, isn't it? We yeah. just review life. Just review life. That's so. That's such a good tagline. But this is the kind of thing that makes me fucking angry. Dave, other things also do give you a potential heart attack and stroke. One of them <laughs> is stress. Is redder. One of them is stress, <laughs> Dave. It is stress. Redder. If you're going to low down on the calories, low down on the stress as well. Yeah, you know? take it easy, big man. So I found on there the other day uh, that a theatre group stages naked family sex shows to teach children as young as. Five, fucking five, fucking five, about sex. A theatre group in the United Kingdom, which makes the United Kingdom... He's read the headline and now he's rereading re the headline, yeah. ...thinks the best approach to teaching kids about sex is getting naked on a stage in front of children and their parents. <laughs> That face. God love him. That face. God love him, Dave. Now, parents, big breasted or otherwise, should not punish their children for not knowing let, about let sex. Them, okay, let, let's see what he has to say about people shagging in front of five year olds. I think I know. So, in theory, then, in theory. some bloke and a woman are yeah. going to get naked on a stage in front of children, mm -hmm. and you're going to take your kid 
which could be age five. And if you've got a five-year-old, there's a fair chance that you might have a, it might have a younger brother or sister. Yeah. Um, to a stage, to a theatre, where mm. you see a man get his cock out. <laughs> Just staying in his face. Dave knows it. what he's doing, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> in a glowing preview by The Guardian, well, that explains the whole of this, then, if it's the... <laughs> he's not a fan. This isn't about... Uh, left wing or being called gammon. People call me gammon just lately. I'm quite. I'm, the people go, oh, you're a gammon. I'm thinking, that is it, because I'm going to take that as a fucking compliment. <laughs> the production company says the show only discusses the positives of sex and relationships on purpose. Well, that's good of them, isn't it? That's very good of them to discuss the positives. Putting a kid in an awkward situation of seeing a bloke who's probably in his fucking 50s with his back like, hanging out, looking like a fucking piece of McDonald's bacon. I have to look up this show. I need to look up this show to check if... What I need to do is I need to fact check Dave to see if the thing that Dave has in his mind is the same as the actual thing the that's reality. going to appear on the stage. <clears throat> Family we can blur sex this. show. Be careful what you're searching, bro. You don't want to fucking... Uh... Uh, it's an anonymous account. The family sex show cancelled oh. amid threats and abuse at staff. Probably one of those 7,311 people I who do, watched Days video. I do video. like the idea that some, uh, uh, the account goes, a large bald man turned up outside of the, st the <laughs> yeah. studio today, yeah. waving his big fists. Waving his penis. A funny and silly performance about the painfully awkward subjects of sex, it's exploring called... names and functions, boundaries, consent, pleasure, sex, sexuality, gender and relationships. Dave's thinking of a sex show show like you get in what? Bangkok and this is not that wow they do look an odd bunch don't they? well that's the why you want to go down to the YMCA don't you so far I don't see anyone having sex or the promotion of sex within this wow this is the pictures that they've released so imagine they're all naked you've just taken the family along I certainly wouldn't have taken my little ginge uh to a show. Just to be absolutely clear for That's people who are watching, yeah, it's his daughter, he doesn't mean his penis. To a show, to see some bloke get his cock out while some woman gets a fucking frisbee flips out and they're hanging down by her fucking knees. Again, Dave, you are sort of wondering, I'd imagine that any of these women's breasts are very much sort of, supple. Uh, yeah, supple Pert. where they used to be. Pert. Frisbee flips. Are we letting that, are we letting that go? Well, we used to call uh, women's pussy lips when we were at school, bacon danglers. Horrible, that, isn't it? The world has never been so populated. He's right about that. Never had so many people in it. It's a progressive approach. Dave again thinks sex I, progression means more sex. Despite the name, the family sex show isn't about incest. Did incest once pop into your mind when you thought of that? I didn't really get that far ahead. My mm. brain is sort of just absorbing a lot right now. <laughs> but if you're going to get down and start being naked with your child. I'm sorry, what's going on here? Why is Dave cooking up a scenario where these people are naked with their children? Th there is one thing, while I walking don't... out the bathroom, you forgot your towel or whatever, and you get one out and your kid's accidentally walking down. I have never, ever done that. Ginge has never, ever, ever seen me naked. She's seen me in my pants. <laughs> Oh God! But she has never ever seen my meat and two veg. <laughs> this is just so good. The last time I saw Ginger naked one was when I changed the nappy when she was ah oh, fucked. God knows how old. That is the job of a father to change their child's nappy, right? There was no anything there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how we've gotten to oh a point God, with six crazy. minutes. Oh God! <laughs> got... This guy. We're only six minutes in and he's now denying any attraction <laughs> any, to his own daughter. His own daughter. He's, there he, is nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> nothing there. I was doing the job of caring for my kid. This, taking your child to see a grown man with his cock out, is not protecting and looking after your child. Well, glad Absolutely. We've got that clear yeah, then. good. Yeah, good. I'm also glad that we uh, cleared up she's not got a penis it's because funny. there was nothing there. The artistic... It's called artistic now. It's another way of getting round, getting your cock out. I could do that. I could do, I could go into love, but stand outside fucking uh, Barclays Bank and get my cock out and say, I'm being artistic. To be fair, Dave, making a good point here. <laughs> and I would also love to see Dave go stand outside It's Bank. art. It's a bit of art, that. Everybody look at me. Ooh, fucking artistic. I tell you, the world's fucked. Dave, you've just made up a fictional scenario <laughs> in which you go and stand outside Barclays Bank. Again, not a real thing. Not a real thing <laughs> that's going on. The world's on. fucked. The world's fucked. Before listing off its pronouns and describing the physical appearance 
for blind viewers, for the visually impaired. They've nicked that fucker off me. I'll tell you what, if you're visually impaired, you'll have to come and have a feel then, won't you? Funky Steve were alive today. I said, yeah, Steve, I'm going to teach you about sex. Do you want to touch me cock? <laughs> Just to be clear, right? If you don't know the full story behind it, he had a lovely uncle, God bless him, passed away. He's passed away. Who was blind. And in this fictional scenario, he's got his dead uncle giving him a hand job. Because he's trying to teach him about sex. I tell you what, I'll take Ging's round. You can see, you can feel what it's like to fucking. What the f I really wonder where Dave was going with that then. David Joy, uh, he had a garage uh, in the village where I lived, and he used to take kids in this garage. And his brainwave was that you could have sex with children. Harriet Harman and some other Labour MPs there were, you know, agreeing with this, that they could have um, sex with kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. They didn't agree that. That's never been agreed. P How do you spell pedo? Yeah, oh, just put that, you'll be fine. Pedo. My work when I was at NCCL was influenced by Pi, was apologising for paedophilia or colluding with paedophilia. That is an unfair inference and it's a smear. There's no attempt to smear anybody. It was the police which reopened uh, inquiries into this particular paedophile organisation. Harriet Harman was one of the loudest MPs on the Labour benches calling for full and open transparency about Jimmy Savile. Wow. All oh, right, Dave might be onto something. Uh, I, I don't know, though, because it sounds a lot like she's basically saying that was not what she was advocating not, for. I, I, he also put some shit on her that she has not addressed there. It's terrible, S that Certain it, MPs, awful. unfortunately, in the past, as we found out, were up to... No good. ...pedoing. This, believe it or not, this theatre show, this fucking sex theatre show, the family sex show, has been funded by the Arts Council England... And guess what? You know every time you go and buy a lottery ticket, you're funding this because the fucking lottery has funded it as well. You're funding a fucking sex show, you pedos. No, but I love the fact that he feels like he's uncovering stuff. Just an idea. Blue Van Man investigates. investigates. Yeah, absolutely. Investigates. I would like to see a new series where he does a bit of digging, mm. sees what he can uncover, because he's already educated us on Harriet Harman. In a way, I think Dave threw the dart. We had to direct the dart in slightly the hey, right direction. The lottery has funded this. It's actually just reminding me I would love to put the lottery on. Yes. <laughs> I could do with getting out of this game, I'll tell you. Tell me about it. Well, I'd just love to be able to go and see a few more <laughs> family sex shows. That's me. I'll put my own one on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, he went to a holiday park. Right, folks, we're in Portsmouth. Well, we're in Hailing Island for Scott and Wanda's wedding. And Ginger's just taking the dogs for a walk. We've got an aerial. We've got an aerial. This is the caravan. It's a two-berth. Well, it's two-bedroomed. The chairs, the cushions are really comfy. This man just refused everything he sees. He's reviewing life, he just reviews That's it. Gingy's bedroom. Oh, she's going to get her fat ass on there. Oh, you can't say that about your daughter. I think you'll find I just did. I love how he has these little combos. Who are these people that he makes up? Oh, en suite. He, he shocked himself. Got for shit in there. I know they've been married for a long time, but those doors are very thin. Those walls are thin. It might as well so, be paper. So having having an ensuite, it leaves nothing to the imagination. Yeah. I just hope June is outside. She probably has earplugs because I bet Dave snores. So. so we're just gonna have a quick chat about uh, the holiday camp. First of all, uh, the gas wasn't on. <laughs> Uh, during the night, uh, around two o'clock, June decides that she needs a slash. Don't talk about women. <laughs> I love that June gets up and he goes, need a slash. And um, couldn't find the bathroom door. Apparently I'd left the suitcase in front of the fucking door. Okay, so it's a couple of days later now and we couldn't resist just going back through the Blue Van Man channel. I'll just be honest, we just thought it was really good. It turns out... He's still great. What I will say is, a few days on, it turns out Dave is actually happy to fill his body with some other things. That sounds disgusting, so can we watch it? Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't really like kebabs, to be honest with you. Do you? Yeah, I do, actually. On a night out, you're going to stuff your face with a Donna kebab. When I first started going out, yeah. So like and then after a while... sauce and all of that. Absolutely, so yeah. You, I'm all over that like, shit. That, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I never liked that. I think you're breaking a few stereotypes here. A few people out there, I reckon, would have gone, he loves a Donna kebab. I don't, I don't know if I hate them, but it's just... Hate's a strong word. To me, they're disgusting. So, yes, I do hate them. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Right, folks, I've not done anything shit like this for a while. Although, probably a lot of you do think that what I am doing at the moment is shit. Whatever. Hello, right, June. Hello, right, June. Uh, so, what it is, folks, as you have seen from the thumbnail and the thumb title of the thumb title that I have not yet taken, but will be this. Now I've caught your attention with a kebab. Because, let's face it, most blokes 
in this country love a kebab. What Dave does is he gives you a bit of his thought process. So, you know, in the last video, Dave went sex, people click that. Donna kebabs, people click that. We're starting to see Dave evolve as a creator here. I'm impressed. He's the willingy of the food world. What do you think of kebabs, June? Vile. She's anti-kebab. I don't want to kind of shave the meat off that thing. Sorry, is that the thing that puts you off? That it's sort of just meat that's just rotating on a stick? So I used to work in a butcher shop. Right, okay. I kind of got the, um, the 411 mm -hmm. on what goes into a kebab. Everything you don't want in an animal, that's a kebab. It's that. That's why it tastes so good, because it's all these disgusting little Off of it's probably bits. been laying on a fucking butcher shop floor. Mm. They've swept it up and thought, right, we'll sell that to them lot over mm. the road. Uh, this is what it looks like. That looks horrible. So, so I've... I've placed it on the flatbed, fatbed, whatever. Flatbed, <laughs> like a flatbed lorry. <laughs> Hold on, I'll show you in a second, just one second. Doesn't this look like Dave playing about with his penis? It looks like he's putting a condom on. <laughs> right, so that's what it looks like, folks. <laughs> That was him doing presentation. <laughs> I thought he was just putting it all in there, and oh it turns out God. he was placing the meat in like even distribution on the bread just oh, to make it look nice. Yeah. You can't make this look nice. You eat Dave, honestly, mate, what have you done here? This looks fucking horrific. Fuck's sake. And this, this is the reason why I'm doing more bloody rants and stuff because this will kill you not literally kill you but i wouldn't put it past it. it that meat it could kill you dave is now putting it in the microwave and we're going to wait for the microwave to be done most people would edit this out not dave i can remember one year when we, we had an eclipse one year in the 90s and we all did all this <laughs> the dog He's talking about the eclipse in the 90s. Do you remember that eclipse, I though? Do actually yeah, yeah, remember I remember it. going outside and watching it. That was amazing. You guys probably won't ever see that in your lifetime. We but... both watched it. <laughs> this is good content, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, oh. That's the state of it. Sweating. Mate, that is horrific. Number 23, you've won a uh, box of quality streets. Well done there. Come and get your quality streets. You know, we're putting out those videos to aliens and stuff. I feel like this should be one of them. They'll think we're not a threat and they'll move on. Bye. Yeah. They'll be like, fuck Earth. It's not worth it. You've won a packet of playing cards. You'll be able to go home tonight with a wife. Looks like sex on a period, that, doesn't it? Right, let's see what this tastes of. need a bit of kitchen roll, my hands are all sticking up. Oh, fuck me, man. This is the biggest bollocks of a fucking video ever. Isn't it? How long is this video? Tell me how long this is. 18 minutes. Fucking hell, mate. It's a kebab. We're 14 minutes in, and he still hasn't put it in his fucking mouth yet. He's put one sliver of it in his one mouth. Sliver. And there we have it, folks. You see, it doesn't look bad no, when now. you say the salad. Yeah, yeah, he's dressed it and up. And you imagine that the meat isn't made of roadkill. I'm really trying to make that a thing, isn't he? He won't have got much meat in his mouth there, will he? Yeah, there was three slices yeah. in there. I'm just hoping the salad saves it for him. A lot of breathing. The road kill's coming through now. Yeah, he's looking around. You can feel around. the you can taste the flavour. It's coming, it's coming through. Quite gamey. Oh. He's done two bites there. He absolutely loves it. Funny enough, now I've washed it all up. What I, now I've put all the, all the salad on it, the mayonnaise. I've, I've placed it out properly. He's absolutely shoving it in his mouth. I love him. It doesn't taste that bad as such. God, he's really going for he's it. He's ramming that into his neck. Can we see what else he's been doing? Yeah, absolutely right. So there's also discussing three lions, which is apparently uh, some people are talking about banning it from the stadium, but they're not really, in which Dave wears oh, an England shirt. Yes. <laughs> I love it when he gets really patriotic. Come on. Right, folks, let's discuss. Is that not the most manly thing you've ever seen in your fucking life? Just took Gingy's car to the garage, and as I was coming back, um, a phone went. Bob from down the road. Have you heard, Dave? Three lines. They're not going to be allowed to play in the stadium anymore. Disgrace. Why? I don't know. Just let me finish this kebab and I'll let you know. I don't want to do this one on here, but the, there's a certain newspaper that we do not like to mention. The Guardian. <laughs> England's Three Lions anthem is facing the axe as the country's official World Cup song amid concerns that it offends other nations. I'll just say this. We now retrospectively know that this story is complete bullshit. Oh, that makes it even so that better. that makes it even better. That makes it even better. <laughs> it's yet another thing, which isn't really a thing. Yeah. But to Dave... He can riff on it I for 10 it. minutes. Yeah, love absolutely. It. How long is this video? 14 minutes. 40. So here's Dave uh, mourning the loss of something that isn't actually lost for the next 14 minutes. I love how, how annoyed he is already. <laughs> 
I feel like he's just such a typical Englishman who's like, country's gone to hell and hell. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He's gone to rat shit, this. Like, here we go. Lions, legend, Paul Gascoigne. That song is in our DNA. It helped us in 96. Uh, we still won, f won fuck all. Uh, it helped us in 96 and it helped the boys in, it'll help the boys in Qatar. What the fuck is Qatar, by the way? Qatar. The song is viewed as arrogant by other countries. We haven't won anything for 50 years plus. What the fuck have we got to be arrogant about? The song is all about wallowing in 30 years of hurt and pain at not winning anything. How can anyone say it's arrogant? I've just said that. I've just I've not read this. No. I've just said that. I've not read the article. I said that. But I've said it and I, I agree, said that. I agree with the paper that I hate. Who, so. who, who said it first though? Yeah. So the people that I read it after or me who said it before I read it. And apart from that, in one way, what is wrong with being arrogant? Manchester United Sir Alex Ferguson made his teams arrogant. They thought they were going to win everything and pretty much fucking did. What is wrong with being arrogant? The Germans are arrogant. Here comes some generalisations about other nations. The Germans are arrogant. The Italians are, in, are arrogant. They, they ain't going to be playing a song, are they? They ain't going to be playing fucking Nessendore or whatever it's called. Nessendore! Nessendore! Tune, though, isn't it? Yeah. What is wrong with being arrogant? Arrogance are a good thing in a tournament like this. You're going to go out there and you're going to feel, I'm invincible. That's what they want. Was that one of the lines? I'm invincible. <laughs> Dave's just making up songs That's now. Awesome. You want to be felt like your people are fucking scared of you, intimidated you. You cross that line, you're going into some kind of war. And now people are oh, not going about the war, Ukraine and Russia. Totally different fucking subject. <laughs> They're on about bringing in Sweet Caroline by Neil fucking Diamond. God, this man gets so stressed, doesn't he? A song about an 11-year-old girl. With it, with it. What's Sweet Caroline about? It's not a pedo song, is it? Touching me, touching you. Was a girlish Caroline Kennedy who was 12, and this is a picture of her. Oh. Little girl on a horse. Fine, it was it? thought it went over to the young daughter of John F. Kennedy, but Diamond revealed it was love song for then wife. The most challenging part of the song was finding the right name to dedicate the simple love song to. At the time, he was married to Marcia Murphy and had promised her a song. It was a love song to my wife, Marcia. Yeah. What's the song called? Sweet Caroline. You seem to have mispronounced your wife's name there. Uh, I mean, look at the lyrics of this shit, because I've never actually... Thought about what you're singing. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are we singing about when this okay. comes on? Hands touching hands, reaching yeah. out, touching touch me. me, touching me, touching you, sweet Caroline. Good times never seem so good. I've been inclined. And is this a ploy again to get people riled up? Because it certainly riled me up. As he says, <laughs> nine and a half minutes into his YouTube rant about this topic. I've been riled up here, haven't I, June? You have, Dave. He's uploaded this today, actually. Yeah. Is this a ploy? Is this a game? Because people seem to think that I'm wearing a tin hat. But the, the problem is, in the last two years, I just don't fucking believe anything I really hear now on the news or the media. I want to say, though, I do agree with Dave on that. Okay, so what I will say is, what I like about Dave is, some people might land on that video of Dave and go, this fucking old gammon just having a go at people and doing things. Nine minutes in, he's gone through the anger, he's gone through and worked it through in his mind, and then he's gone, hold on a minute, have I been sucked in? So Dave's smarter than your average bear. I like his rants, and that's what I want to I wanna see more of. BBC Ooh. ignore Henry VIII. Oh my God, I've got to watch that. Now... No, right, folks, that's what it were. Ooh, I like that shirt. By the way, what it says on the front, Dave, uh, front of Dave's shirt is, it's no longer our job to job wake, up, to wake the up the sheep. I've seen on the internet that the BBC are doing a new series, uh, an eight-part series called Art That Made Us. Um, and it's going to explore turbulent periods of British history through the lens of art, literature, music, design, but... Henry VIII is not going to be included in this. How the fuck can you have the 4,000 year history of Britain and not have one of the most controversial figures of our British history not in it? If they ever do like a recreation of Henry VIII, I think Dave would make a great Henry Dave VIII. Dave should play Henry, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is basically what he did. Henry did that then to the Pope. He says, I'm not having it. I'm not having you telling me what I can do, what I can't do. It was the original Brexit of Britain telling Europe to fuck off. I see where Dave's coming from. In many ways, Dave's actually bang on there. 
because it was led by one man wanting something just so he could shag around a bit more. Dave again, enlightening us. That's generous, but I see where you're going with it. What was happening is that the Catholic Church was ruling Europe. So while the Pope's messing around with whoever he wants to mess around with, you had to send somebody on an horse. Henry would say, can I divorce this woman? And then he'd say, no, you can't because of whatever. And, I, and Henry said, well, fuck you then, cocker. Am I the only person who is detecting a slight tinge of admiration for Henry VIII? I'm feeling his enjoyment at, at Henry VIII's sake doing that to the system. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of him that's like, and good on him. The Turner Prize winning artist to discuss a painting of Henry VIII called Field of Cloth. Field of Cloth of Gold. Look, Field of the Cloth of Gold, sorry. I'll edit this bit out. <laughs> you can cut that bit. I'll edit this out. Edit out. Let me just get that back up so I can carry on reading it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Where is it? Uh, uh, He's right. left all this in. Where is it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Right. I'll edit this bit out. Yeah, so, um... He edited the... the he edited the bit! The, 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 he edited the bit where he said, I'll after edit us, But he forgot to edit the bit before that. The best thing is he didn't edit it out. They're always trying to change history. They're always trying to, oh, we can't put that in because we might offend somebody. And it was a bit of a naughty time then. It's all bollocks on about taking David Livingstone's bloody statue down in Glasgow now because he might have had links with slavery. Back in the 1800s, every fucker had links with uh, slavery. You went over, you bought, they bought some fucking cotton back, they made some wool, you wear a jumper, it's made of fucking wool that's been picked by a slave, you can't fucking help it. Another thing I should be picking up on here is the slavery thing, but cotton is cotton and wool is uh, from the sheep. The other stuff, I'm gonna skirt over because we just don't have time for that in this video. I'm fucking fed up with it, all this crap that you can't bloody, that just, just happened years ago and now people are just gonna ignore it. I tell you what, why don't we just ignore the fact that England won the World Cup in 1966 because there was no black players. I'm really in shock at this. Let's forget Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore and the Charlton brothers. Yes, and the Jeff Hurst. Let's, let's forget that. Nobody's saying. No one's making these accusations and no one's at any point saying that this the England is, team wasn't inclusive enough. This is enough. another time where Dave sort of has an argument with himself. Let's forget that because there was no blacks in the team. I'm not sure this is funny anymore. He's created people that aren't saying things and he's then gotten quite angry with these people. No one at any point has said, write Jeff Hurst out of history because, <laughs> because black people hadn't played football with him. It's just pathetic. It's just... Fucking, you cannot change what happened in the past. That's valid. That's the broad point he's trying to make. In this fictional scenario, which isn't happening, yes. about the 66 World Cup being cancelled. Right, which it isn't, and no one it is trying happens. to cancel those it people. It definitely happened. You cannot do it. And the BBC are helping this every fucking time. God, I'm worried <coughs> about his blood pressure. Me too. Fucking fed up with it. Yeah. What happened then was bad. It was a complete different fucking time. It's like, you, you look at stuff now, right? You look at stuff time in time now that's happened now today in 50 years and people say oh that was terrible why wouldn't we do something about it probably that's, this video that is a very good point dave's making an intellectual point here about how everything uh, in the context of its time has its own validity and yeah. i can understand that it's right back why don't you do something about the fucking slave sweatshops in leicester and all other places but no you turn a fucking blind eye to that one i very much agree i don't, didn't know there were slavery workshops well i i think what he means is when you pay people such a a small amount of money. Right, okay, that, so it's entrapping people. people in a situation they want to be in. Do we move on now? I think so. Um, I want to congratulate Matt Letizier. A great courier. Yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with some of Matt Letizier's recent tweets and stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. Very familiar with okay. Matt Letizier's recent tin hattery. On actually stepping up and saying what he thinks about things that are happening in the world. It's about Ukraine. I personally, right, don't trust our media on anything at the moment in time. Valid point. Well, not on anything, but... So not valid point, sorry. There's a lot there, I think, we're being manipulated. Matt has left Southampton. He was the ambassador. Did Matt lose his ambassadorship over this? Is this the hill to die on, Matt? Matt said on another tweet on Wednesday morning, to make this very clear, he does not advocate war in any shape or form. I didn't advocate war. How do you get to a point where you need to tweet out, I, I don't didn't advocate, advocate war. war? When you used to watch Matt Letizia on soccer, you see that soccer sat, you see, there's another thing, isn't it? We're now calling it soccer. It's not fucking soccer, it's football. Because the Americans want us to say soccer. I think the reason it happened is because it was, it was alliteration. And actually, soccer is a word that comes 
comes from us. Football fatter day doesn't work, does it? Right, it's fucking football. It'll always be football. It's always been football. So could we can't start calling it football sat day? It's just another thing where the media and everything just kind of just tap into your head and say... I'm literally so shocked that we're three minutes in and we've gone from Matt Letizia denying a war to being sucked to now we need to call soccer football everyone in this country already does it's just the name of a TV show soccer get that everybody gets saying soccer Dave's sending out a message through his own brain I think we need to make this the last video our government has been lying to us for fucking years and years and years all you've got to do is just go back to Iraq with the weapons of mass, distu mass destruction mass disturbance I was there. Sorry, Dave was in Iraq. I was there. <laughs> I seen them. I was there thinking, oh, fucking hell. What are they going to do if the fucking Saddam just decides to send just one fucking weapon over to us? What happens if he decides to fucking bomb? Love, bruh. <laughs> I've just got this instant, like, Team America style sketch in my head of them. Going, I know, we'll bomb Love, <laughs> They fucking scare you, and that is what their fucking job is. But because now people are starting to fucking question what they do, and, I, and this is why I do these videos. I don't care about fucking views of my fucking food and stuff. I've gone beyond that. I've broken the stratosphere of food. I am now political van man. Fucking eating food for a living and getting bigger and fucking bigger <laughs> as some kind of entertaining fucking sea lion. <laughs> He really reminds me of me dad. I really love him. What am I, a sea lion to you? I want people to watch my videos now and I want people to start questioning what the fuck is going on in this country because the government and the fucking media cover everything up and they tell you, they drill you, they fucking try to make you believe what they want you to believe. Jimmy Savile. Jimmy fucking Savile. I knew the pedos were coming back. I knew back. that this was coming at some point. Here we it. go, guys. Ready? We're about to go on a roller coaster from a man who reads the ingredients of a doner kebab packet. Strap out. In. Yeah. Oh, he's a fucking hero. Have you watched it? Have you watched it on Netflix? You watch it? Yeah. I have now. And it's still being covered up today. It's still being covered up for what that dirty fucking nonce bastard did. And this is what's happening now. Do you know what? I think we've got to let, let Dave have his moment there. There was some ups and downs along the way. Absolutely. Um, we've been on such a journey from, again, a man who reads the ingredients of a Donna Kebab packet and trusts that, but doesn't trust the media. That was Blue Van Man. If you've got any more Blue Van Man videos you'd love us to watch, or there's anything else that you think in particular we should react to, send it to us, tweet it or whatever, and we'll, we will see it. We're on social media. We're on social media. All social yeah, all, all of them. Obviously, we love Dave. Do, do show him some love. 147,000 subscribers on the Blue Van Man channel. And we love him with him. We do not endorse a single thing he says absolutely but we are laughing with him see you soon and uh dave uh we love you see yeah you. love you dave see you, dave. sorry uh, about that bye-bye yeah uh, question everything bye. question everything question it see.